The Celtics have the most dynamic options to throw at both of them of anybody that Dallas has played this entire playoffs. While at the same time, the Celtics haven't had to guard anybody at Luka's level and definitely not somebody at Luka's level with Kyrie with him. So it, it really sets up what is going to be a very, very interesting coaching matchup between Jason Kidd and Joe Mazzulla. When we look at it from the Celtics perspective, which is really where I want to start between Drew and Derek White and Jayla Brown and Jason Tatum, they got a lot of different things and a lot of different bodies that they can throw at Luka and Kyrie and just try to figure out, man, what is going to really work the best? What's going to disrupt either of them the best? Um, and I've seen people try to make the argument that, ah, you know, maybe Drew is a little bit too small to guard Luka, but. I wouldn't put anything past Drew Holiday. Nothing past Drew Holiday. He's a guy who I think has more than proven himself to be a effective defender against everybody but legit fours or fives in this league. And even then, he's a guy who has such good active hands. He's just so so smart from an IQ perspective that he can still be effective in bursts and in individual possessions against guys who are bigger than him. So I just I think from that standpoint, this is going to be the biggest test. For Luca in his playoff career, in terms of what he's going to see on the defensive side of the ball, um, well, again, at the same time, on the opposite side, if you are Boston, we just saw Luca abuse every single coverage against the number one defense in basketball. So the 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 matchup that is going to be had there from the guard spot. Um, is one that is going to, I think, really define this entire series because for the Mavericks, everything starts with Luka and Kyrie. And if you're able to find a way to get one of the two of them even just a little bit uncomfortable, like you said, you're going to need both of them to be having these huge type of performances combining for 70-plus points. And if you can hold one of them to 15, 18, 20 like that's an opportunity for a game to win. If you can do that a couple of times, that puts the Celtics in a position to uh, potentially come out on top in this final. So I, I want to hear your thoughts about the Celtics options um, at trying to guard this combination of, of Luka and Kyrie. I mean, honestly, it's just more so they, like I said, they have the best options between anybody in the league because they have so many great defenders that they can put on them. Like, you have a guy, like, like you said, Drew Holiday, but you still have Derek White. You still have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are also great defenders in their own right. right. So, I mean, they have the bodies that if you feel like if there's anybody that's going to give them the most problems in the Luka and Kyrie, they have those options. It's just a matter of will it actually work? Because when you're at, like, especially a guy like Luca, he is at a point where it's like, bro, you could, doesn't matter who you put on him. He's going to get his, no matter who the defender is, no matter how elite of a defender he is, he's going to get his. Um, So it's really just a matter of, I think you don't, making it as tough as possible, if we're strictly just talking about how you're going to defend these guys, making it as tough as possible Um, to where it seemed like in the previous series, right, they got whatever they wanted. Like, it didn't matter what, like defensive coverage they seen they were able to one also get also they were able to one get their um get themselves off whenever they wanted to mm-hmm. and also make the right play and pick apart the defense whenever right. kind of thing um Celtics I feel like a better can do a better job of taking away those other options even if it's just them kind of going off on their own um but we're strictly just talking about them defending them like I said this if anybody if anybody's gonna do it it is gonna be the Celtics um, but then again, like I said, when it's a guy like Kyrie and Luca, like I still have confidence in them that they're going to get their numbers. They're going to still, um, have their games because nobody can really stop those guys. Right. Um, but that, that then really begs his next question. Like it's going to be tough and it's really hard to stop <clears throat> guys like Kyrie and Luca from getting their numbers. But this entire playoff run has really been, you know, Part of the biggest offensive game plan for Dallas has been being able to get those easy baskets at the rim for guys like Dafford and Lively. Mm. Do you think the Celtics are going to be able to have an answer? Because from a size perspective, obviously you have Chris Apps, who's an underrated, I think, rim protector in my opinion. But outside of him, you're looking at Al Horford and then Luke Cornett at being guys to have to play in that drop, play you know against the dunker spot and try to – 
disrupt those lobs against, uh, you know, Gafford or Lively. And we saw even in this, this series against the Minnesota Timberwolves, like Gobert try, but so much of that comes down to the fact that Luke is able to put a guy in jail behind him and then Gobert gets in that no man's land. And all it takes is that one little step and that pass is going right over his head. So, so do you think the Celtics have the personnel and can, from a perspective of it doesn't even have to be really, you know, KP or Al Horford, but like you need to have a guy who you're willing to just leave him on that island. And if you're going to take away those lobs, you just have to be like, look, if Luca or Kyrie is getting downhill and they get into that mid-range high paint area, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving Gaffer Lively. Like I'm taking this lob away. Do you think that's a A is something that the Celtics could do or B something that they should really look into eliminating entirely because sometimes those lobs just they come at the most inopportune times when you can have really long right crowd is going you have long possessions you feel like you've played such good defense for 19 20 seconds and now nowhere what looks like is going to be a tough floater over a guy or a tough mid-range shot is really a pass to Gafford right on the right side of the rim honestly I don't think that there's anyone that can stop it just off the fact that Kyrie and Luca are so skilled in that pick and roll. Like you said, putting guys in jail and putting that defender in that tough situation to where they are in no man's land and they kind of make that decision. So in reality, like I said, I think that they have great personnel to defend it as best as possible. With that being said, I still think it's not possible when those guys are going to defend that because, like I said, you really have to make that choice. So in reality, I feel like it's going to be a matter of choosing one or the other, right? If you're going to fully eliminate those lobs, then it's tough because then I feel like Kyrie and Luka are kind of have whatever they want scoring for themselves. Um, I can see it from a standpoint of like maybe you want to eliminate the lots because like you said, they come at the worst times. They get the crowd going like that. It gets the team going, things like that. Um, and when a guy is kind of just going off like Luka or Kyrie, it's like, yeah, they're going to get their numbers anyway. Maybe let's not try to let these other guys get involved as well to get the whole team going. So it might just be a decision of, what do you want to live with? Because at the end of the day, when a guy is so offensively skilled, you're going to give up something. And especially when a guy is so skilled passing wise, because Luca not only makes the right play for himself and is able to score from anywhere. He also is always a guy, a guy like him and Jokic will always make the right pass no matter what. They will always right. find the open guy. They will always hit the lob at the perfect time. So that's a little bit tough from that aspect. So I think it's just going to be a matter of picking your poison and figuring out which one you'd rather live with. Honestly, that will probably come more so in like a game to game adjustment type of thing. Like you'll mm-hmm. see how it goes. Like maybe you'll try one thing for the game one, right? That works. Maybe it doesn't work. They're going to obviously adjust to that. Then at that point, you adjust to that adjustment. So I think like that's going to be like the, like for the last series, right? It was how do you defend the pick and roll? Would you guys blitz? Do you drop? Like that's how it was for Minnesota. I think that's going to be the biggest thing for the Celtics is figuring out, all right, what's the best way to defend this and it's just gonna i think it's gonna change game by game like i don't think you'll see a set thing every single time because if you do then you're definitely getting killed because then luke and Kyrie are gonna get adjusted to that and then you're screwed so i think you'll just see um i think that would really just be a test to joe Missoula, his like adjustments and how he's able to adjust to the adjustments because obviously jason k is not just gonna let you make an adjustment and just sit on his hands so i think right. that's a good that's a good thing to look out for game by game to see how they defend that Thank you.